Station. What did you say? Okay, yeah. And that one is called Grosse Speedscoper. And Speedscoper is actually <coughs> the name which have been mixed with Dutch and Afrikaans or or, uh, or Dutch and Afrikaans or German and Afrikaans. Okay. And Spitz is something which is spelled like this. And Koppel it's an Afrikaans word and it means the head. The pointed head or the shaft head. Yes, and Spitzkoper is one of the insel bears which we are getting here in Namibia. And do you know what does Inselberg means? No. It's like the island. Okay. It's actually the mountains which have rises in the flat area. Okay. And we are getting three of them. We are getting Spitzkoper, Brandberg. Brandberg is the highest mountain of Namibia. And the Erongo Mountains. And the Erongo Mountains are the widest or the longest mountains in Namibia. And it is about 200 kilometers. Okay. And Spitzkoper is also called the mother home of Namibia because of the shape from the directions. Yes, and you see guys are uh, from the west up to the north it's Tamara land and I am also a Damara and in our language we've got four clips, four sounds. Let me first write it down for you. Yes, those are now our four clicks, and uh, I will start with the first one and end with the last one. The first one is... That's now the loudest click in our clicks. And the second one is... That's the difficult one. And the third one is... That's the easiest one. Maybe if someone says to you a wrong thing or... If you may uh, uh, if someone says to you wrong thing, then you say, ah, I don't care, or ah, this fly. Ah. Yes, yes. Okay. And the last one is sideways to the right. If you ride a horse. Yes. And you see, guys, these clicks, we use them every time when we start our words. We start our words with the click. First the click, and then the alphabetical letters. Then you, uh, then it makes a word. But sometimes, then we are also only studying our words, only using our words with the alphabetical letters. Like if I can say it, Matisa, that one is very easy for you. Matisa, Matisa, it's a Damara word, but it's without the click. And Matisa means how are you? Okay. Yes. And if you ask me Matisa, and if I'm feeling good, then I'll reply you with the first click. Then I'll say it, Kani a. And kind of means it's good, it's fine. Yes, and if you ask me again, Matisa, and if I'm not feeling good, then I'll reply you with the last click, then I'll say, Kai A. And Kai A means it's bad, it's not good. Kai A, it's good. And Kai A, it's bad. <laughs> you see, the words are similar, but it's just the clicks which make the difference. And without the clicks, you can say, Kai A, Kai A, then it sounds like one word. And with the clicks, Kai A, it's good. And they are each bad. Yes. And you see, always if you like to say a word good in Damara, then you must always remember to start with the first uh, click. Maybe if you like to say good morning, then you start with the first click and end with the last click. Then you say, I was. Good morning. I was. Yes. And maybe if you like to say good afternoon, then you just use one click, the first one. Then you say, I got up. Good afternoon, kind Kara. And maybe if you like to say good night, then you use one click twice, the first one. Then you say kind voice. Yeah. And you see, guys, the Damara name for Spitzkopper is we call Spitzkopper Kainku. It's with the second click. And Kainku have got two meanings. The first meaning said it is the last large mountains on the way from the north. And the other one said he is calling for you from far away to come and visit him. Like while you are on your way from Swakov to Winduk with the main road, then you will see the rock formations of Spitzkopper and you will make a turn to uh, you will make a plan to come and visit him. Kainku. 
the last large mountains on the way from the north and he is calling for you from far away to come and visit him and you see guys speed scoper is about 1728 meters above sea level high and from the ground level it is 700 meters and now we are at 1090 meters above sea level okay yes and you see these ones we call them the pontok mountains pontok mountains and the name pontok comes out from those samara traditional huts with the roof like this which have been done by the bark from the trees and by the wood from the trees and pontok mountain is about 1000 629 meters above sea level high and from the ground level it is uh, 600 meters yes and you see all of these beautiful rock formations here have been done by red granite and you see red granite have been done by three things by feldspar mica and quartz feldspar mica and quartz and you see all of these beautiful rock formations here have been done by the wind and the water erosion. It has been eroded about 135 million years ago. Yes, and guys, do you know that uh, Namib is the oldest desert in the world? Wow. Yes, Namib is the oldest desert in the world. And these rock formations have been done by three things again, by molten rock, by magma, and by volcanic. It was the old volcanic and then the magma super push it up and then the wind and the water have aroused it and all of this water goes to the west to the sea so now we are 100 kilometers near to the atlantic ocean yes and from here about one uh, km there we've got our small uh, village and our village have also get the name out from the big mountain and it is called spitzkogo village and they left about 300 up to 500 people with the school and the hostel kids because we've got a lot of farms surrounding this area and the children comes to stay in the hostel to go to the school and weekends and holidays then they go back again to their farms and we get water we pump it out from the boreholes but our water is brackish water salty water because yeah. yes because we are very closer to the sea and we are driving five to six kilometers out from this area to fetch us some drinking water. And can any one of you maybe guess what is our main transport here in this area? Donkey? Yes, donkey cuts are our main transport and we call it the Namib Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you see, uh, guys, this is actually the place that we are calling the small bushman's paradise. Because about 2,000 up to 4,000 years ago, that time, there were hunters and the gatherers living around in, in this area. And then they were living under the cave, and then they were living out from hunting, and then they were getting water from the rock pools, which we have here. And then they were doing this drawing. And why they have do these drawings is for? It's actually the way of communication. Yes, they were communicating each other because about 2000 up to 4000 years ago that time, there was no cell phones, no internet, no email, no Facebook, no watch app. And that time, they were just communicating through the pictures. And here in these pictures, they were communicating through three animals, through a rhino, elephant, and a giraffe. And if you saw one of those three animals in the pictures like this, which is pointing this direction or pointing that direction, then you must always know it is a sign for the water. It is pointing the water direction. Because you see, uh, this is a rhino and this rhino is facing that direction and the rock pool is just on top of that big rock there. Yes. Because you see, uh, they were just like nomads. They moved group by group from place to place. So that the other group of people can also see if they came here, 
And if they saw one of those three animals, then they know the direction where to go and fetch for the water. It's the way of communication. And why they put those three animals for the water sign is because they used to drink a lot of water and then they are not staying far away from the water point. Yeah. And you see, uh, guys, all of these big animals which we are getting here in these pictures were here before. When there was good vegetation and a lot of water, then such big animals like rhinos, lions, buffaloes, oryx, and giraffes uh, were also in this area, but the climate had changed. Now they move up to the north, up to Grand Bear, Cravel, Fontaine, Etosha, so on. Because here is less vegetation and less water for them. So yeah, two to four thousand years ago, those animals were here? Yeah, they were here. Yeah. And you see, guys, uh, these paintings from the Central West, from here, and from Kleiner Spitzkopf, small Spitzkopf is about 15 kilometers out from this area to the west, have not been done by the Sun people. Because you see, uh, this, uh, the, now the, if you come to the Kleine Spitzkopf, to the cave paintings, then you are getting the uh, paintings which are higher. And you see the sun people, they were small people. And now they say these paintings have been done by the Berg Tamaras. Berg Tamaras are mountain Tamaras or Khoi Khoi. And Khoi Khoi is also the tribe which is coming out from Tamara people, which have drawn these paintings from the Central West. And Damaras are the second endemic people to Namibia. First it was the Sun people which have started coming into Namibia. And after the Sun people then the Beth Damaras came in. And we came throughout from the north, through from Angola. Yes. And you see the word Bushman, it comes out from the white people, from the Europeans. Because if they saw any black people then they just call it Bushman, Bushman, Bushman. So now the word belongs to all of us. Yeah. And you see, uh, guys, uh, these paintings have only been discovered only 50 years ago, 5-0. And most of the pictures that we get here, it's lumen figures. Yes. And you see, guys, uh, maybe you know or maybe you have read about it. This is the question to you. Do you know in what does the hunter store for the water for the dry period? Or in what does the hunter save for the water for the dry period? In what? A bladder? No. A pot? No. Your turn, Jason. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Because uh, uh, they took the ostrich egg. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, ostrich egg, and then they make the hole. And put the yolk out, and then they fill it up with water and close it with the seed. And then they dig a hole and bury that egg with that water in that hole for the dry period. And then they just make a sign not to forget that place. <laughs> so they were very clever. And these paintings are about between 2,000 up to 4,000 years old. And they have used ostrich egg yolk, blood of the animals, fat of the animals, red ochre and yellow ochre. And for the white paintings, they have used the milk from two of the poisonous bushes, which we are also getting here. Ethiopia tamarana and Ethiopia virosa. And they were also using the milk from those bushes uh, to uh, uh, tap on the arrow to shoot the animals. Mm. Yes. And these two are now two bodies of half human, half animal. Half human, half animal. And why it is half human, half animal is because about 2,000 up to 4,000 years ago, that time there were uh, that time our ancestors or our grand grandparents, when they were doing their traditional dance, trans dance or healing, then they were also changing into the animals as well, because their belief was very strong, and this was also a spiritual place. Yeah. And this is a picture of a rhino facing the water direction. And these are the hunters. And up here as well, here they were running. Or maybe you can also say they were playing football with ostrich egg. <laughs> yes, and all of these are the hunters. And here, this is a picture of, with the white, this is a zebra. Zebra with the white stripes. 
and this is a giraffe here is the neck and the head and these are the legs and all of these are the hunters which were begging and up here these are now two pictures of elephants this one is painted in red ochre and this one is painted in yellow ochre and this is a picture of a lion and this bird we've got also one picture of an ostrich this is a picture of an ostrich here is the body and here goes the neck and the head and these are the legs you were running away from hunters yeah. cool mm. What? Uh, of course, you see uh, the antenna is outside oh, I saw that, yeah. the mountains. Yeah, it's too high. Mm. Yeah, so, guys, uh, this is actually the painting that we are calling the golden snake painting. And as you can see here, the tail starts there, and it goes and it goes, and there was a rock and it was over the rock but the rock has broke down or you can also say it, it goes in here and comes out here and this uh, was the head but the head had been damaged by someone and this is the two horns and this is a shaman he was fighting with the snake and he was jumping and screaming and this was also the way of communication because that time there were also such big snakes in this area and it was the warning for the others. Beware, there are such big snakes in this area. It's the way of communication. Yes, and it's the same age, 2000 up to 4000 years old. Same things, ostrich, egg yolk, blood of the animals, bed of the animals, red ochre and yellow ochre. And it was the same with the uh, the other animal, the snake. They're going too, or there's still yeah, snakes. Yeah, they were also. Yeah, there are still snakes here. The snakes that we are getting is buff otters, horn otters, zebra snakes, uh, cape cobra, and uh, we are also getting coral snakes as well, and python. But A python? Uh, yeah, but not the big one, the dark okay. one. Okay. The small one, yeah. <laughs> which is also no, uh, which don't have poison. Yeah, the people are just taking them up and put it on their neck, <laughs> but I don't trust them. <laughs> it's still bite, even though they're not poisonous. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's, you sit, you find snakes every once in a while in here, like yeah. in this area. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm swimming in that. Dinner bowl. Yeah, because you gotta imagine like the bugs and tat, you know what I mean? Whatever living thing is here out here, it comes here, you know? Birds, you see these little birds flying around. See these things turning into frogs? Yeah. 